right now we have with us photog award-winning photographer Tracy Bosworth Page. Uh, Tracy has been working as a headshot and editorial portrait photographer for the, for the past 15 years. And she's coming on to teach us about personal projects and to give us a live demo while she shoots. Um, a big thank you to Zeiss for sponsoring this event. And as always, if you have any questions, please drop them in the Q&A tab. If you're joining us here on Zoom or in the comments section, if you're watching on Facebook or live stream, and we'll get them answered for you. So with that, Tracy, I'm gonna turn it over to you. And please, please ask your questions. I'm not the kind of person that gets thrown by questions. In fact, I feed on them. So if you have questions, we definitely wanna know them as we go. So I am a uh, editorial and portrait photographer uh, or a headshot photographer out of the Atlanta, Georgia market, um, as Danny said. And we are probably the top one or two, depending on how the numbers are falling, uh, entertainment market in the world right now. We trade with LA, just depending on who has more COVID. And uh, <laughs> you like that, huh? Yeah. And uh, we also, uh, Montreal, um, I think they opened up faster than we did. So they got a little foothold, but we're stealing it back because <laughs> we're back at work. So we're about 90% back at work in Georgia. And, um, you know, we're, we're doing our best to stay healthy and stay open. So I have, I'm fully staffed today and I have some guests in the, in the studio with me also. And except for Jen and I, everybody is masked. So we are taking this very seriously and um, behaving. Um, so that's pretty much what I do most of the time is I work with actors. I just had the gorgeous young actress, uh, Kylie Cron, just left the studio right before we went live with you guys. Kylie, of course, is the star of um, Disney Channel's new, um, oh my gosh, I just forgot the of Sulphur, the secrets of Sulphur Springs. I, I was like, I got to that part and all of a sudden forgot the name of the show. Uh, the secrets of Sulphur Springs, and that's pretty much what I do. Um, headshots, editorial, publicity, uh, magazine editorial for these actors, all age ranges. I work with a lot of kids, and it seems like right now I'm working with a lot of Disney kids. But uh, Jennifer is my muse, and we have been working together for what, four years, five years? I feel like it's five. Yeah, it's, it's been a while. It's been a long time. So she's like my other half, my creative soul. So um, Jennifer is a full-time professional actress and she is damn good and also speaks fluent French and German and has subjected me to sitting through an entire French play. Sorry. But it she- It was a lovely original local play and I was the costume designer for it and we were in it and it was wonderful. Yeah, she, she was the lead and she was also the costume designer and the the French gowns that she designed were absolutely stunning with the empire waist and all of the, the bustles and the hair pieces and the fans. It was, it was gorgeous. Just for the costume value alone, it was worth seeing. So I, I, I like pretending to be other people and wearing pretty things and making them. And, and we found out that I like shooting uh, her pretending to wear pretty things and pretending to be other people. So uh, Jen, what is, your undergrad and your master's I always get them confused. Is the master's in acting and the undergrad is in costuming? Yeah. Okay. So she has an undergrad in theatrical costuming and her master's degree in acting. And um, she prefers to be known as an actress. So we kind of keep the whole costume design thing on the down low. <laughs> but the, the, way, the way we started working together was that I came to her for headshots. And at some point, right, like when we were finished, she turned to me and said, hey, do you have an evening gown or something to just come back here and you know, we could shoot that for fun. And I said, well, you know, I, I could make something. You know, I had a little birdie in my ear telling me these things. Her best friend at the time was also my longtime assistant. So, you know, Carrie is feeding me these things to ask. So, you know, there's a reason why I knew that. But, yeah. Yeah. So, so and so That's she has made some really stunning couture pieces for me and, um, it, it, you know, we, we create creatively collaborate. I can't speak. Um, I was lucky enough, fortunate enough to win the, uh, in 2017, the Southeastern Professional Photographers Association, uh, best portrait of the year, uh, with a piece that Jen and I designed together. And that was kind of almost like the beginning. Um, we did that one shoot beforehand. We, we did them both the same weekend. We did one like first thing with the pink dress and then we did like two in the same weekend and the Anne Boleyn was one of them. Yeah, we took her to Jekyll Island and shot some mermaid stuff she wanted to shoot and did it at high noon and made her made her die in the heat and the bright sun. That was fun. Yes. So we discovered that we, 
we, um, you know, we both have our outside obligations and our bread and butter and the things that we have to do, you know, 99.9% .9 of the time to make a living. Um, but we, you know, we found out that without some sort of an outlet, we were kind of withering inside. And um, we discovered that we were each other's outlet. Yeah. And, you know. I mean, there's only so much, no matter what you do for, uh, for work, no matter how much you love it, it, at some point it does turn into a bit of routine. And for me personally, I mean, consistently shooting auditions on tape over and over and over again, it, it, it's fun and I love it and it is creative, but it's not really creating a piece of art from scratch in the same way. So. And yet we are creating art from scratch and we have even gotten into, for me, every piece we do while she's creating the costumes and the pieces that we're shooting, and I might be creating some of the, the environment and the set, and sometimes we even incorporate still life into our, into our images. Um, the other thing for me is that it's gotten to be a study in lighting. Um, every piece we do has a different look and feel of the lighting, and it's an opportunity from, you know, headshots and editorial portraits, 95% of what I shoot is with natural light. And I love, playing with studio light and strobes, but not just in the, you know, a portrait photographer tends to set everything up one way and just shoot that same way time and time and time again. I really, because I don't shoot studio strobes or even constant lights day in, day out, I get a chance to break them down and set them up and be creative and do something entirely new and different every time. So that's been part of what we're doing. So the piece that we are doing today is inspired by Edward Hopper, who is a uh, phenomenal painter. Um, oh my gosh, my art history is leaving me. I wanna say like the 40s, 50s, 60s, somewhere in that period of time, uh, modern, contemporary, um, but somewhat of a vintage feel. Um, so if you look at the Edward Hopper pieces, um, you'll notice a few things. One is solitude, which Jen and I have really keyed in on, I think during this pandemic, we both have really been feeling the effects of solitude. When we see each other now without a mask, this is like, when we see each other with a mask if we see each other at all. Um, this is weird. And the only way we're able to do this is because we're pretty much hermits, completely other other than this, but yeah. It's and, and we are hermits. We stay, you know, Jen and, and, and her other half, Josh, who is sitting right over here, um, they stay by themselves like 99% of the time. And when I'm not working, I'm home in my bubble with my two children and my husband, and I don't go out of my bubble. And my staff, who I know you guys can all see, uh, behind us on camera is the wonderful director of photography, John Pruner, who works in the film industry and is an actual director of photography in the film industry. And John has to uh, stay in his bubble. He was telling us that he's 44 times you've tested now. Every time he works, he has to have a negative test, and he has now been tested 44 times. 45 on Thursday, so he's about to go up on that. And uh, Wyatt, who is, uh, Wyatt is my key assistant and also is operating our computer tonight and um, he's, he's bringing a lot of our show to you. So um, Wyatt stays in his apartment or is masked and doesn't go anywhere. Um, we're just all really, really careful. So the solitude, I think, his hit is particularly hard, as is hitting everyone. We think it's a universal theme. It, it has to be, but yeah, at some point, like just staying alone so much, it just creeps into your brain. And it's, there's the simultaneous urge to want to do something completely opposite and also just to use it and lean into it. And So that's what we're gonna do. We did it with our last piece. We did a live demo, demo a few months ago and John made this beautiful, Victorian morning dress, and we focused on solitude and grief. And we brought in a pair of shoes um, as though she had just lost the owner of those shoes. And we kind of focused on that energy and that emotion. And tonight we're using Edward Hopper as our inspiration because he, again, he paints a lot uh, about solitude. And even when he has other people in the images, there are, it, there's usually this sense of solitude among the individuals. It's like they're not reacting with each other. They each have their own space. And we, we felt like that was a very important influence or message for us. And then the other thing that is very Hopper-esque for us, and, and I'll let Wyatt in a second jump on and show you some of the, the Pinterest um, images. But the other thing that you'll notice is the, um, 
the lighting, there is usually indication of a window and almost like a spot or a hot spot on the subject and behind the subject. So the light is just very strong. So um, it's a little different way of thinking about window light. So in photography, we think about window light as being this large open soft quality of light, open soft source of light. And tonight, what we wanted to recreate was a very hard source of light. Um, so we have set up for you, we are starting with the studio strobe. I'm using a Profoto head and I have a, a zoom um, lens on the head. Um, and we have it up high. I'm on a, um, I think I'm on a Kupo grip stand or it might be an Avenger, but we have it pretty high up so that it's mimicking the way the sun would come into a window. And then we have, and I know you guys sell these at um, B&H, but we have two um, v, v flat world flats set up and I have them and John will be able to show these to you. Um, John, you want to swing around and show our lighting setup? I'll walk over and we'll do this. And so what we've done is we're using the V flat world flats as a gobo or a cookie. Um, so we have them very close together. I've got them at 90 degree angles um, just to kind of keep the light. It's flagging at the same time on the outside as well as the inside. And we create this very small space. And then the, um, the pro photo head is straight through kind of centered. So part of what we'll need to do tonight is we will need to keep that light straight to Jennifer. So it will just pretty much highlight Jennifer and not the whole set. And then we've got some pieces around we thought we could play with to kind of make our finished image. And this is a concept that Jen and I were already, you're about to walk into your stand, working on together. Um, so this is not something we're doing just for you, but this is something that we are, we're already concepting. And we're kind of going to go through the process of shooting this for you. Um, and then I will be able, both of us will be using this image going forward. So it won't just like go away. This will become part of our portfolio. Um, Jen, I don't know if you can kind of flash to the wall and see some of the images there, John, that we are putting on the wall. So we've been working, you know, we've been taking these images and incorporating them and uh, been entering exhibitions in the Southeast and um, why well, you don't have, we won't stay long enough for you to get the light on. It's okay. And um, we just are, um, you know, these are pieces that work into our portfolio, that work into kind of our concept of what we've been doing, which is really kind of a highly stylized uh, influenced piece. And in most cases, I'm even going more toward a black and white, high contrast black and white. And I'm gonna grab my camera, John, so I can talk about that. So, and while I'm talking about that, let John get set back up on his on his tripod and his legs, his sticks. Is that the right word? Okay, yeah. So we, we are so different in the way we think and, and talk. I shoot 95% of my work with this baby, which is a Zeiss Otis 100. So it's an F1.4 100. And tonight I'm gonna shoot with a Zeiss Otis 55, which is just a little bit wider and um, just kind of an alternate lens. It just lets me play with a different POV. So most of my work is with the 100. And especially during um, all of our COVID protocol, the 100 is a better choice than maybe an 85 because it lets me be just a little bit more distant from my client and still get a great headshot. But tonight I wanted more of the scene and more of the environment, so I'm shooting with the 55. Um, I get a lot of questions about how I make an Otis work on the Sony, and I'm shooting with Sony A7R4, uh, which is my camera of choice. And the reason that I'm shooting with the A7R4 is because the sensor is 60, 61 megapixels, and it really, um, the Otis uh, takes advantage of the sensor. It, this, all of the information that I can get out of this Otis, this is probably next to the Nikon D850, maybe one of the most capable cameras at uh, receiving all of that information. So it really lets me take advantage of the size lens in a way that a smaller camera wouldn't take advantage of it. Um, for most of the Sony cameras, you would probably shoot with a bodice lens, the Zeiss bodice line of lenses, which are gonna be the automatic lenses. This is a manual focus. This is an EF mount for uh, a Canon camera. I'm using a Sigma MC11 adapter 
to adapt this mount to the Sony. Um, would you do me a favor and put that, you're gonna have to watch the cord though, or here. Wyatt, can you come get this for me? I'm gonna put this back I up. Say, I would love to, and I- And then we're gonna trip, all yeah. All over this. Dress. That's exactly what's gonna happen. We're, you're gonna trip and that, that I'll be untethered and, and that'll be our first disaster for the night. <laughs> yeah, um, well, no, don't sit in the ground in shame. That wouldn't be the picture I'm looking for. <laughs> so, um, but the Sony uh, A7R4 lets me take advantage of these beautiful lenses. The Sigma MC11 adapter is how I adapt the uh, EF mount to the Sony E mount. And the reason that I'm doing this instead of a Nikon mount, and I got this question on a board a few weeks ago, and it was a really great, great question. Um, but the reason I'm doing that, the, the Nikon F mount, uh, the, because the Nikons, they have a separate aperture ring, uh, you don't, they don't need the uh, adapter, doesn't need to be able to digitally read all of the information. And because the Canons don't utilize that separate aperture ring, uh, the, the adapter has to be able to read all of the digital information. So we have found that the digital information transfers better through uh, the EF mount than it does through the F mount because the adapters are more complete. Um, so that is the reason that I've chosen to go E, F to E instead of F to E. Um, and that's pretty much it on that. Oh, how I make this work for me. As I'm shooting, because I'm manually focusing, what I've done, and Sony was great about helping me reprogram my camera, I have changed this custom button to uh, the magnification button so that I can hold my lens with one hand and easily magnify my viewfinder so that I can fine tune my um, manual focus. I lost my words. Huh? Um, no, I'll, I'll, we'll demo it in just a second. Um, so, um, so anyway, that's how we make this all work. And then of course, we have to have the Profoto head to trigger the Profoto. We also have, if we have enough time for you, we have set up a, a separate um, LED focusable Fresnel, and we're gonna put it in the same position and do this shoot uh, with an LED. I, I will say that the, um, the thing that I'm experiencing with the, with the LED is that light is so bright that Jen will have a hard time looking at it and we've had to tone it down a little bit. And when we tone it down a little bit, we have to increase the ISO on the camera, which is introducing some additional noise. I did some demo images of that last night. I really was not displeased with the digital noise. I thought it kind of added a nice en environmental atmospheric kind of feeling to the shoot. So I'm, I'm not against doing that. It's just that the images are gonna be a little bit crisper and cleaner, I think with the Profoto head than with the LED. So that's kind of my note on that. And with that, do you guys have any questions so far? Are we good, Danny? Uh, no questions just yet. Okay, all right, cool. So we're gonna start setting up and shooting. So Jennifer, darling, you are going right on the crack of the couch, which is just, I've been waiting to say that all night. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I have the humor of a high school boy, so. I'm sorry. All right, so you are going to have to literally center yourself a little bit more and you're, I want you to look straight down the two flats. And I'm just gonna trigger just to make sure everything's turned on. Um, so now, are you feeding to this, Wyatt? Okay, so we, as we shoot, Wyatt has this live view which is hard for me because I keep wanting to, um, I keep wanting to view the back of my camera and I can't because it's popping up to Wyatt. So I'm turning to look to see what we have. Oh, that's pretty. That's really, really pretty. So we did, I normally have white drapes. We are in my studio in Atlanta and I normally have white drapes hanging behind us, but the hot spot from the lights was really, really hot on my white drapes. So we switched it out earlier today to gray. Oh, that's really lovely. Okay, Jen, I kind of lean forward a little bit for me. And just, yeah, lean again. You're looking your nose straight through the flats. 
and that kind of let's just start playing with the whole idea of loneliness and solitude Wyatt can you do me a favor can you grab this chair out of the way I thought I would like it and I don't like it yeah and we do this a lot as we're shooting we start removing stuff from the set that we don't that we really don't care for um, Jen, you see what I did, don't you? Look down on the floor over on the stool. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, no, I wanted him in. I thought you meant out as in, as in where she could see it. So... I don't like cats, and uh, we were originally going to shoot this in Jen's apartment and use her cat. And uh, her cat doesn't leave the house, and so uh, I. Do you still have the piece? No. Yeah, the mic is over here. It's very, very wet. I'll, I'll repeat what she say. Oh, my, my cat really enjoys sitting on everything I make. Oh, yeah, yeah, I can see that. I bought a stuffed cat. Just to annoy Jen, really. You can pull it over and play with it. It actually looks pretty good. But now you look like an obsessed cat lady. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's play with, I, I wanted to, I started with a teacup. And so really, as we're doing this, we just, Jen and I just kind of spend some time playing with the angle and the, um, and the items and just kind of decide what we want to do. Wyatt, I'm not looking at the images after I shoot them. So if I'm too hot, let me know and I can try to adjust. Is Was that better? I just turned my ISO down a little. Okay, does that make it not, do you need, does it need to go down more? Oh yeah, that looks really lovely. Oh, that's gorgeous. Jen, Jen, you look amazing. Do you want real tea? Do I need to get you some real, we could bruise some. Well, I was just kidding. Tip the saucer back up toward you a little bit. There you go. It was a little. You can put the saucer on the table, too, if you want, and just have the cup. I mean, you probably wouldn't have the saucer in your lap, right? I mean, you could. Hey, Wyatt. Will you take the cat and put it, like, over on the other side of the green couch? Yeah, just so that it's peeking out just a little bit, but isn't so prominent. Tuck it in, yeah, a little bit more. They're right there. That's that's perfect. I really wanted Jen to have the cat in her lap, but she wouldn't take it out of her house, so it's her fault that I had to buy a fake cat. Am I? The cat's face? Oh. How about this? Is that better? Can you see the feed when I'm not shooting or do you just see it when I'm shooting? Uh, I can see your Jen, you tip the cup a little this way. There you go. Don't spill your tea. Can you bring up the cup toward your mouth? Oh, I love that. How's the spill look on the back, Wyatt? Do, you need, do I need to change my angle so you see it a little bit more? No, I think the reason I feel the couch and my dresser. Okay. So you kind of see the spill there? Yeah. So this is this is that kind of ho uh, hopper influence where we've got this really kind of hot light coming in on her, so it's very pinpointed. 
Sean, tip the cup slightly the other direction. There you go, perfect. And tilt your head the other way too. No, just the other tilt, yeah, toward. I don't even know what's right and left anymore because we're so reversed to each other. And look down at the cup. Oh, I like that. Go ahead and take a sip of your imaginary tea because I'm a horrible hostess. And put the cup down on the table. And look at the cup. That forlorn Lauren cup. So the dress that Jenna's wearing tonight and the robe are all pieces that she's made. Pandemic projects, right? Oh, I like that. Tilt your head toward the wall. Can you uh, come forward toward the table just a little bit? Let's see how that looks. I don't like the posture. Reach, reach down to both hands to the cup. Let's, um, John, let's swap out the lights. Let's go to the LED and let's play with the LED for a little bit. So my, my friends, Ellis and Rupa are sitting behind me so that, um, you know, I have, I have an audience. So do you guys have any comments or questions? Um, I was using the D1 head because I had it plugged in okay. and um, I, I just hadn't unpacked the B10 yet. <laughs> Are you using or I am using manual. I am not a TTL user. So this is a great question. Um, I personally uh, don't like to shoot um, TTL because I like to be in full control. I like to be in full control with everything. This is why I'm shooting a manual lens. Um, I have, I use, um, I set my Kelvin temperature manually. Um, so we are set right now to 5,400. Um, just, I'm using a slightly um, warmer temperature for a slightly cooler tone than the 5,600 that the strobe is set at. I just, I like that on the Sony. That seems to be my sweet spot. Um, yeah, no, that looks really good. Did you turn the other one off? Okay, I'm going to turn the, uh, the head off. And I need to change my camera setting real quick and turn. So when you're shooting a studio strobe on the Sony, you have to remember to turn your live view display off so that you can see the ambient light correctly. And now that I am shooting, I'm shooting, um, the LED, can you turn that, hold on a second, I'm gonna adjust my ISO. Yeah, I like that. Can you turn turn the, the LED up just a little bit? Oh yeah, the barn doors have fallen. Here, Wyatt, if you'll grab my camera a second, I'll go do it. I can see it. Yeah. It needs to go all the way up, though. All the way up? Yeah, it's, it's fall, it had fallen. It wasn't in the right place. Oh, yeah, I, yeah, no, this spill is okay. But now turn it down just a little bit. 
because now Jen is almost too hot. Go down just a little bit more. Well, I'm at 6,400. Let me turn my, my ISO down. How's that look, Wyatt? Hold on, it should populate. That looks good. All right. More contrast or less? Less contrast than the previous? It's so hard having this feed to a computer and I can't see it. Just because the computer is not facing me. Jen, lean forward with the cup again. Put both hands around it like you're just holding the warmth. Tilt the cup slightly to the wall. There you go. Perfect. Don't spill the warmth. Can you center that cup just a little bit more? Up, no, up, up toward, go back toward me just slightly right there. You want to play with the jewelry and put the cup down? Do you want to pet the cat? I'm kidding. The cat was a joke. So we have the LED on about half power right now. And again, as we mentioned earlier, if you turn that LED up to full power, this is a very nice and powerful uh, Fresnel, it will, um, she won't be able to look, she'll be squinting. So this is um, part of the problem with shooting with the LED is that um, in, when you get it up to that full power, your subject can't look at the light. Um, do I need to stand up? I can stand up and, and talk. And uh, so when you get it up to full power, you can't look at the light. But um, so to, you want to dim it so that they can look at it. Then you're reliant more on your camera to pick up the ambient light source. But then the advantage of an LED light is that it is very cool. It's fairly inexpensive. And um, it also, um, you can see it. So if you're not used to working with a studio strobe, LED gives you a light source that you can see. And I love, I'm being lit right now with an LED panel from Nanlite, and I absolutely love that light. It's a, it's a big panel. Um, it's the 26B, I think. And it's, it's like using a softbox, but because we wanted such a hard light on her, we're using the flexible um, Fresnel, and it's just really beautiful. But that's where we've got the stream of light coming straight through to her, through the two flats. Um, so it's very, very controlled. Ellis, Rupa, do you guys have any other questions? Yeah, oh, okay. What, what brand is, uh, the, the brand on the LED? Oh, gosh. John, you might actually have to look at the brand on the LED. I'm not sure. Okay. No, the, no, that's the NAN light. What's the one behind you on the... None of us know what the brand is. So we're going to have to look. <laughs> you got us off guard there, Ellis. Ladgo? Say that again. Ladgo. 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 So it's Ladgo. And it's got the barn doors on it. And it's also focusable, which is just really nice because that focusable, uh, for now, you can, you can really change the, the size of the beam of the light and um, get it softer or harder, depending on what your purpose is. We did a shoot back in January where we used three focusable Fresnels to mimic stage lighting. And it was a really pretty, we went and did it at the Atlanta Symphony Hall and it was a really pretty shoot. We did, I had a jumper, um, Jen outfitted my jumper and a lot of fringe and it was kind of a study of uh, kinetic and frenetic energy and static energy so that we could um, show the difference between the, the frenetic and the static all in one one image was, I, I don't know, it was intriguing. Like I, I, I think earlier, a lot of my images or studies in light just to play with what's possible and not stay with, with one pattern. I like to keep pushing the boundaries and, um, and just exploring, I think for my own creativity, what I can do differently. So what, what Jen explores with um, the sewing and the, the fine details that she brings into the costumes. I think I am exploring with the setting the environment and controlling it with the light. Ellis, oh, it's a great question. 
Um, it's down further. Are you, are that Yeah, that one works too. So that is the one we shot at Atlanta Symphony Hall with the, uh, the frenetic and static energy all in one shot. So when you close up on that image, you can really see the fringe kind of blurred, but there's a, a certain, certain staticness of the way his legs are being held horizontally. I mean, it's just it's very still. We shot that at F8 so we could kind of capture that motion. I don't think my ISO is very high. I think it was actually around 200. And um, the aperture, well, the aperture was F8. The shutter speed was probably 1,160 or 1,200. That seems to be where I, I typically live. I'm a little different in that I set my aperture and my um, shutter speed and usually don't play with them too much unless I need to. And then I change my ISO and I, I make all of my adjustments from the ISO. So when I was programming my camera, it was really important that Sony helped me program something that I could easily access to change my ISO. So that's, um, that's been a blessing for me. So thank you. Thank you for pulling that up. So you want to play with the jewelry a little bit? Let's, um, clear the cup out of the way. Let me grab that cup. Wait, I'm going to hand you the camera for a second. I'm more mobile than you are. Just put it back over here. You like that angle? Yeah. You, want, you want me to try it? Yeah, try it. Okay. Suggestions. Suggestions from Wyatt. This is beautiful. I hadn't been over here yet. I think because of the column. Yeah. And because I can't see any of the spill, how's it look? There's a touch of spill on the back of the uh, couch, but it's, it's, yeah. it's like a, a nice sort of renaissance lighting. So we bought from, uh, we bought a can of, hold the camera again for me. <laughs> we bought a can of atmospheric spray. Ooh, that'll be fun. Yeah, we thought that would be fun. Ellis, you want to do me the honor? Yeah, yeah, that's it. If you'll do me the honor of putting on some deodorant, I would really appreciate it. Um, I'm thinking the beam right toward the flat. So let's just see if we get any, if we can pick up any of the beam. I would spray from the flats toward John. You kind of see what he's doing. And yeah, let's, Jen, if this is bothering you too much, please let me know. We thought it would be really kind of cool to be able to see the beam of light more. Oh, yeah, John. Oh, here's the switch right here. I got it. The fans and the HEPA filter. <laughs> oh, let's try that just a little bit again. Okay, now I think we got it. Are you seeing that at all on camera? I think it's mostly reducing contrast. If we let it clear and it happens to play right in front of her, then it might be. Let's try that. Yeah. Okay, you are in the picture, but if you spray and then move, then I won't get it. Okay, ready? Jennifer, you ready? Okay. Right there. Nah, it's not holding. Hey, it was worth it. Huh? Okay. Yeah, the HEPA filter is not liking this stuff. <laughs> My HEPA filter has gone bright red. Okay. Yeah. Hold on just a second. Let me just get focused on Jen. Okay, got it. Okay, let's try that. Nah, it's not really. Well, we thought it'd be cool. You can't really see it, Ellis. Yeah, okay. Yep, you want to try it with the strobe? Let's go back to the strobe. No, I, I think it's the angle of the light. You really want to have it backlit or hard lit. Okay. Well, it was worth playing with.
or thicker smoke. Yeah, I don't want to get too thick. I don't want everybody to be choking here. So that is, I think we have all of the images that we pretty much need. So if anybody has yeah. any, yeah. Over here, for We're all tethered. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I don't want to. I want to see the spill. Okay. Yeah, that was why I wanted to see the spill on the dressers so that I can see the light. And when I'm over there, I can't see the same angle of light. You see what? No, we we yeah we decided not to do that, and I'll explain that in a little bit. Yeah, we just didn't want to we didn't want to do that. Yeah, Alice, when I did that last night, I'll show you. So when I'm when I'm oh we got a pretty sunset. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's see I can't see the same spill of light that I can see from the other direction. Okay, is that is that I'm right in front of this desk? I did. We remember earlier. You yeah, that was your idea. We did that. So I mean you could have her um, offset to the right hand side of the frame and get her shadow on the uh dresser as well. I just I can't see the spill over here. And that's part of what I wanted in the image was the spill that way. It's still a lovely image, though. Mm -hmm. Very cinematic. Mm -hmm. Danny, do you have anything on your end? You guys are so um, quiet. We don't have any um, anybody asking questions just yet. I think everybody's just kind of locked into to watching you roll. So uh, if, if anybody <laughs> has questions, you know, please, please get them in. We'll get them answered for you. That's, that seems to be, um, that seems to be the pattern. We did this uh, a couple of months ago and um, I, I was like, okay, everybody's so quiet. You, surely you have some questions. And I keep trying to look at the back of my camera and it's not working. And uh, is, is your uh, LED, is it uh, an RGB LED or? Is it uh, one color? It's just one color, yeah, it's not a bicolor. Yeah, the, the NAND lights we used in, um, no, those, those were controllable, the NAND lights we used in January, weren't they? Yeah, the NAND lights we used in January were controllable. This one is just a one color. So it's just, just a 5600. But again, on the Sony, I've found that 5400 I really like. I feel like at 5600, I start seeing the yellow creep in. I'm sorry, Wyatt, what? Jen, you know what's going to happen? We're going to have too many to choose from. And they're going to be in our normal problem where we're sitting there trying to figure out what the heck we're going to choose. Oh, dang it. Dang it. That's terrible. With the aperture I'm shooting at, I am at 7.1. And my shutter speed is 1160. And right now my ISO is 2500. And when I was using the Profoto head, my ISO was at 650. My aperture and my shutter speed have not changed. The question somebody asked is what uh, what I was shooting at, what my aperture was. I know you guys can't hear Wyatt. Now, Tracy, can you talk a little bit about what your post processing workflow is like? Like, how do you select, go through, you know, go through and select the images that you want? What what do you use for editing? Yeah, I'm going to walk in front of the camera for John and help him out a little bit. 
Um, so my post-processing work, workflow, we're going to put these into Lightroom. Do you want me to step back toward the light? Will that be better? Okay. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to put these in Lightroom and I do all of my, um, my cataloging in Lightroom and I've used Capture One also and it's, you know, six to one, half a dozen the other. They're both fantastic programs. Um, so all of the cataloging will be done there, but then all of the editing will be in Photoshop. Um, I am a big believer on getting things right in the camera. So for example, tonight, uh, I have an air conditioning unit right there. So to try not to have too much to edit with the air conditioning unit, we've actually kind of uh, matched the tone of the wood with a piece of brown fabric to kind of cover it up just because I don't want to have to deal with that in post. Um, so we do try to do as much in camera as possible so that we don't have to do a lot of post. I just, I, I think that, um, you know, there's just a certain amount of in-camera artistry that I really appreciate um, seeing what my lens can do, what this um, Zeiss Otis 55 can do. Um, so I don't want to do as much in post-processing as um, what I can do in camera. I also want to have a life afterwards. I don't want to have to go home and sit in my in front of my computer for hours and hours and hours. I enjoy shooting. I don't enjoy the, the computer time. So we'll just try to knock it out as quickly as we can once we're, we're posting. Jen and I, um, I will load everything up into a gallery, you know, because normally we're not together because of COVID. I know, right? Um, so we will try to um, share a gallery back and forth and kind of share notes. And the other thing about the Pinterest page, I. We didn't really talk about this in the beginning, but when we start, we start with a Pinterest page and a mood board, and um, then we we end with the Lightroom galleries in kind of the same way. We share everything back and forth between the, the two of us and try to make these decisions together. I don't know how much of that question I, I answered and how much I wondered there, Danny. I'm sorry. No, that was great. No, appreciate that. And we actually have a question from uh, Elisa, who's watching here on Zoom. Um, I don't know if you Hey, Elisa. Yeah, she's asking, what aperture are you shooting at? Uh, 7.1. Very awesome. I just have to focus on John because I can't see you guys. You're in a different place. And Tom has John's a wearing a mask. I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, Tom has a follow up question to that aperture. Um, he's he's asking why 7.1. Um, so normally when I'm doing headshots, I would be at 5.6 and I, I usually 95% of the time live at 5.6. And that's just so that I can keep both eyes in focus when I'm shooting. But really what I wanted to do tonight is I wanted this to be a little bit more of an environmental portrait. So I um, shot at a smaller aperture so that I could get more detail in my environment, which did affect my lighting because I had to be a little bit brighter on the light to get that harsh sense of lighting to compensate for the smaller aperture. Awesome. And um, Suki on live stream actually had a question. She's, she's asking, how long um, do your shoots typically take? Oh, gosh. I am horrible about... Um, so, I mean, we, like I said before, we mood board these and then we, um, we, I sketch them. So I've already sketched this also. Um, so I've, I've done like a story, I've mood board, we've done a mood board, we've done, I've done storyboards. And so usually I'm bad about, we go in, we shoot and bang, I'm done in 20 minutes to a half hour. There's something floating in front of me and, um, you know, I'm done and I have to force myself to keep shooting just to see if I get anything different. But um, I can be done in the first five or 10 minutes mentally and um, have the image exactly that I wanted. And I know some people have to kind of lead up to the image. Usually I've, I've pretty much am able to pre-direct it before I get there. In my uh, editorial um, portrait sessions, uh, usually those sessions are about an hour. I can get four looks with a client within an hour. We're just really you know, quick and fast and kind of organic and, and try to make it painless. Great. We also had a question. How do you determine what lighting style you're going to use for a particular portrait, like deciding between natural versus artificial light or hard versus soft light? 
Um, so I generally drift towards soft light. I love soft light. I love a beautiful, soft quality of light. So uh, my favorite lighting style, if I'm shooting indoors with a soft box, is either to use the uh, Profoto RFI 4x6 is my go-to, or I might suspend a large octa over the top of the head and shoot down with a large octa. Um, I also use a deep octa. I've got a 36-inch wide, 90 inch deep octave double baffled with um, a honeycomb grid on it that I love to shoot with. And so those are probably my three go-to uh, lighting setups inside. Um, outside, I always look for indirect light. I probably shoot 95% of the time with a uh, natural light because of the nature of the work I do. Um, the directors, the casting directors, the agents, the producers, publicists, um, editors all prefer that in, in my particular industry from me, they seem to prefer the, the natural light. Um, so I'm either shooting with a window light or an indirect light outside. But when I'm inside those big light sources, I generally look to shoot. So tonight's shoot was something out of the box to let me be a little bit more creative and explore a different lighting setup. So when we do these creative sessions, we are both Jen and I, talk to me over here. Let me stand over here by myself. Jen and I are both, um, we're trying to explore and be out of our box. And that's really important for both of us. And now they can hear you too. Cause what? <laughs> <laughs> Cause I have the mic. I own the mic. It's, it's on me. Girl power. That's right. Girl power. Awesome. Well, now I know, I know it's so important to, um, you know, when you're shooting portraits to, you know, make, make a connection with your subject to, to make them feel at ease. Do you have any tips for how you do that? Yes, actually I have, um, the best tip I can give you for how I do that is to talk to people. Um, you have real conversation. Um, I get teased. I think my staff teases me a lot because whenever I'm shooting, I have to be the center of attention. I have to be the, the wittiest, the funniest, the smartest person in the room. Um, but I need the client, the subject's eyes to be on me and all of their focus to be on me. And when they're on me, then they're also, it's, it's through my camera. And I also shoot, and the 55 is not as big as the 100. Why, can you hand me that 100? And I'm going to hand you back my, my camera. I'm just going to hold this for a second. Don't go too far. Um, so with the 100, this is a really big lens to look into. Um, so this is the Zeiss Otis 100 and it's on my camera. This lives on my camera like 95% of the time. But this, this lens just sucks the client in. They can really kind of get lost in the aperture and watching the mechanics of the lens. And if I have a client that is not really responding to me emotionally, sometimes I can get them to respond to the science of what's going on with the lens. And that's been a, a very big benefit for me. We'll trade that back out. Thank you, sir. Um, so I do that a lot. But my biggest tip is to have conversation with your subject. Um, if you want them to be sad, have a serious conversation with them. If you want them to, to laugh, tell them jokes, but try to find jokes that resonate with them. In most cases, I want them to connect. So I'm trying to find uh, stories, tales, jokes, anything um, that causes us to connect. And to get to that connection, I'm asking them what they've read, what they've watched. In most cases, most of my clients or subjects are actors. So we're talking about scripts that they've been through, characters they want to play, um, character or scene studies that they've done, anything I can get to to connect. And um, this weekend, I had one of those rare clients that I was actually able to use keywords with. I didn't even have to go into whole scenarios or subjects. I could just throw a keyword out and get a complete range of emotions, which is always a, a pleasure to see that happen. Um, one thing that you do, as somebody who's been on the other side of your lens a lot and knows what she does that works, um, one of the things that- Right, sure, I'm gonna put the, I'm gonna put the mic between us. Between us, that helps. Um, one of the things that um, is lovely as a subject is that she doesn't ever tell me how, what to feel, which is, you know, as, as a 
I, I, I teach actors and, you know, I've, I've been directed and I, I know that one of the most right, obnoxious you. things as a subject or as an actor is to hear, well, you know, be sad or be angry because you sit here and go, grr. And her approach is a lot simpler. All she tells me is, to, is where to look. So, you know, look down and then look up and turn your chin over here. And it's, it makes me feel like I'm doing it right and so I can relax. And the other thing is that she keeps up this lovely running commentary of, oh, look at the light there. And oh, look, this is beautiful. And oh my gosh, look at that. And then she'll stop and she'll come over and show me and say, isn't that lovely? And then she'll go back to shooting. And she makes me feel really good. Aww. So <laughs> like that, those are like, as, a, as one of her subjects, those are some of the things that make it very, very easy to just sit in front of her camera and feel happy about being there. Well, we want everybody to not focus on the stress of what they have to look at, look like. Um, we want them to focus on just being themselves. And one of the things that um, the, the agents tell me most often is that I'm able to capture the essence of somebody. And I think that capturing the essence of somebody is having real conversation with them and letting them be themselves in front of my camera. And that you like themselves. You're not trying to make them be somebody else, which is helpful. I've had headshot photographers who just, I very clearly felt that they were going for like a look and whatever that look was, it was something I was not. And, and, and then we come going. into these creative sessions and we let you be somebody else. <laughs> yes, then I want to be. <laughs> we take it in a completely different direction, which is fun for us because we get to get out of our ordinary skins and get into different skins. Um, Jen become, gets to become somebody else and portray somebody else. And I get to play with lighting and atmosphere that I don't get to play with every day. And that's been really delightful. It sounds so great. I mean, from my perspective, I just really like putting on pretty dresses I can't wear in everyday life. So, and you like making pretty dresses too. I really do. That's how I started. I know. I started doing costume design because I all this history, all these pretty dresses that we can't wear nowadays. And then that developed for many years. And now we're here. And you can't put past her building in bone, bone Corsets. I can't even say it. Whale bone corsets. I really screwed that up. Um, I have seen this woman corset herself into a dress that um, would probably kill most of us. It's so much fun. <laughs> corsets are fun, you guys. They are fun. Well, they're fun to watch you wear them. They're not fun for me to wear them. I don't do them. Um, Wyatt is asking if I ever use special effects lenses. Um, no. Yeah, I don't. I, um, I love my lenses just so much that, um, I, yeah, I don't, I, I guess, I think I, I am, um, using the best lens in the world. So I, I, in the only time I, another question that I get a lot is do, you know, filter lenses and my train of thought on putting a filter on my lens is why would I put something between me and this gorgeous glass? So I don't do that either. The only time I filter my lens is if I need to stop down my lens, I might use an ND, or if I need to take the shine off a surface, I might use a polarizer. But other than very specific instances, it's just me and, and my really pretty glass. And I like to, to keep it that way. Danny, do you have any other questions? Um, looks like that's that's all the questions we we had come in. Really awesome presentation. I, it was really interesting to see your you know your creative process and watch how you play around and experiment. Really cool. Well, I appreciate it. Did you guys have any other questions, Rupa, Ella? Alice is surprisingly quiet. I don't know what to do. <laughs> Yeah, that's um. So that's. Oh, okay, I, have a oh I knew this wasn't okay. gonna last. With, with LED lighting, do you ever have problems with flicker? Um, with LED lighting, do you ever have problems with flicker? So um, there is, there is an anti-flicker setting in your camera. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and you were going to talk about how you set up the Sony. Oh, um, I thought I did talk about. Did I not talk about that? How I how I set up the Sony? Yeah, for uh, zooming in with 100. Oh yeah, yeah. It's um. So and and, and I I thought I did. Uh, so I have my Sony set up. Um, hold on, I have to clip this back onto me. I can I, Vanna White it for me. Vanna White it for me. Yeah. Um, you know what? Take the pro photo head with you because um, I felt myself start to bend it, and I don't want to to bend the pins. 
All right, so I have my Sony set up. I have the custom buttons on the top. So I have this top button set up to magnify the back so I can, if I'm zooming in on somebody, um, Ellis, I can't see you. There we go. I can, um, I can zoom and then I can focus. There's Rupa, Rupa wave. Yeah, so that just makes it really easy to focus. There's Josh. There's the troublemaker over there, Ellis. That was that was your cue to wave. Oh, <laughs> vote Warnock. <laughs> Ellis writes um, professional uh, writes product reviews for professional photographer magazines, and he's one of the most eligible photographers I've ever met in my entire life. So I always oh, ask oh, him. Oh. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say eligible. I meant to say knowledgeable. Okay. I'm nervous, <laughs> and that came out right. Okay. Ellis is long time married. Uh, so he's not eligible. He's knowledgeable. <laughs> that was bad. Um, but so I love that I can magnify and just um, oh, zoom right into, I'm not looking at you anymore, Ellis, because I'm embarrassed, <laughs> and zoom right into whatever I want to see the detail and then go back, see my whole setting and click the button. And it's that easy. Um, the other thing I've done, I find near my trigger thing could grab my lens and zoom and just one quick easy motion but i also customized this uh c3 button up here to be my color temperature so that i set my kelvin temperature manually so that i can adjust my temperature on the fly if i need to um, if you've got changing lighting conditions i know if you if you're a manual if you're not shooting manually you should be so if you look like bright daylight you might be um, 5,600 to 6,000 in your temperature and your light. And then as you move into the shadows, you might have to add some, uh, some pinks or, um, you know, if you're, if you're in low cloud ceiling, you might have more saturation. Um, so you need to cool off your, your Kelvin temperature a little bit. So just as you move around, you might see the color variations. So I can just make those quick adjustments right here on the fly. I have discovered that my Sony and my lens combo are very neutral, and I really like shooting at around 5400K in studio lighting situations, and that when I get to 5600K, sometimes I see some yellow creep into my images, and I don't like that. So again, I like everything to be right out of camera, so I, I like that to be pretty accurate. So those are my custom settings. That's, that's pretty much what I've done to the camera. Um, I was a long time Nikon shooter, so Sony really kind of helped me customize the camera to behave the way that I was used to the Nikon behaving to make my transition a little bit more um, seamless. Do you have any other questions? We actually had a question that just came in uh, from Eileen. She's she's asking if she can, uh, she wants to see the dress that Jennifer is wearing. Is it possible to turn on oh, overhead? Yes. Um, Eileen, Jennifer, will you stand up, please? Will somebody please turn on an overhead, the overhead light so we can see Jennifer's dress? Eileen is my dear friend and part of my, she's one of my challenge partners. So Jennifer has made this lovely robe. And Jennifer, you want to just give us a flash of the dress underneath? Um, we're not going to show too much because it is a little bit more revealing than we had, we had thought it would be. Uh, but Jennifer has also made the gown underneath and she made the gown specifically for tonight. So, yeah. So that's, that's it. We just wanted this to kind of go with this kind of solitude theme. And we looked at a lot of the hopper. Um, so if you look at our mood board too, you'll see a lot of the white satin robes and gowns that Jennifer pinned as inspirations for tonight's wardrobe. Yeah, just because I knew. Oh, wait, hold on. Oh, 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 the, the microphone. <laughs> um, if anyone out there cares about um, construction, this thing, and making sure that things like satin don't go insane with um, lights and end up taking, producing way too much glare, um, this satin got washed really roughly in the wash with like shoes and things, and uh, with a lot of water on, on hot, so it came out kind of dulled, which means that it gleams a lot. Let, I mean, it still gleams, but much less so than it would otherwise, which is... Yeah, we didn't want the dress. Jennifer was very conscious about the dress not luminescing um, the light. Um, so we didn't want it to become a big light box by itself. 
Uh, we wanted the, the light to stay on her face. Um, which a lot of us who do competition, it's something that we focus on a lot, is keeping the face lit and not make the body as hot. So Jen really went through a lot of extra stra extra steps to make sure that the dress would not luminous on camera. Especially because it's white. I mean, it's just, it just, that glows. But, you know, the, 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 there were some really beautiful studies of solitude with women in white in those paintings. I was like, you know what, that's pretty. Let's, let's go let's that route. Let's figure out how to fix it by beating the fabric up and it kind of started with I was fixated on Pinois set. Yeah. And so um, that was that was kind of led us to this. And Jen had already made the bathrobe. And so she made the gown to kind of go with this to kind of give us the feeling of a vintage Pinois set. Yeah, yeah this, this this robe thing came from a phase which I might still sort of be in, in which I was like, let's make um, Victorian corsets and wear them around the house. No, we don't want to hear about that. <laughs> I like them. They're fun. Yeah. All right. We're going to leave Jen behind now. What? <laughs> Eileen, you will see this. You'll see these images again at our challenge group meeting next week. So um, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. Not sorry. I'm apologizing in advance and taking it back at the same time. <laughs> awesome. Really cool stuff. Well, I mean, we don't have anything else on our end. Do you, do you have anybody else over there has any questions? Any more questions? Rupa, Ella? Josh, you want to throw anything out at your other half? No, he's being amazingly quiet. <laughs> no, I think we are good. Thank you very, very right. much. We've really appreciated it. And we should have some of these. Please watch my Instagram feed. It is tracybosworthpage.com or not, that, that's my website, Tracy Bosworth page on Instagram. And I will try to populate some of these, one or two of these images uh, by tomorrow or the following day so that you could kind of see a finished image from our session tonight. And awesome. I will see if I can get Zeiss, Zeiss Lenses Americas to also put them up. I think their Instagram page is Zeiss Camera Lenses Americas. We'll see if we can get them to, to pop one of them up as well. Awesome. Well, thank you, Tracy, so much for coming on. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you to your whole team over there for, for keeping everything afloat. And um, great to have you thank on. Thank you. Thank Thanks. you, John. Thank you, Wyatt and Rupa and Ellis. Thank you guys for coming and asking great questions. And thank you guys so much for watching. <laughs>